Oi you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. Let's tune into the conversation. Here we go. Well, welcome to Dorothy and the Dealer, Mitchie. How are you going? Yeah, I feel like we're up against a couple of fucking pros here today. Oh, I think like, we are I because like <laughs> they do this for a living oh, no. pretty much. Oh, no. <laughs> um, welcome, Dean and Anna Murphy. How are you guys going? Thanks, guys. We're great. <laughs> You dare you see you sound like a radio presenter, even how you said that. Yeah. Like, do, do you know what the funny thing is? We're breakfast radio announcers, so if this is a visual thing, we look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> been up since the crack of dawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Anna and Dean, you guys are brother and sister, and we've we've known you. How long are we? Because we met you first, Anna. How long has it been yeah. since we've met? Oh well, I was young then. You so were. <laughs> you're you're my age. You're still a little bit old. You're like a month older than me, aren't you? So like, <laughs> yeah, so what time? It's about fifteen years ago, I think. Maybe yeah, something is like it that. that long? Yeah. It was. So it's going to be twelve at least, but I'm thinking wow. it's closer to fifteen. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. It was. It was eight for me because 2012 was my train wreck year. So I sort of oh. go by that. Yeah. When did I meet those fabulous people? <laughs> oh, train wreck year. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> the train wreck was yeah, before we met, not after. Yeah, right? <laughs> that was way be, that was before. Yeah. That was before. Very important to clarify that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. How did we meet Anna? Oh, actually, before we get started in just to having a conversation, you know, we start our podcast with yeah. you know getting people to share their favourite song or trying to test Mitch mm. to see if he knows the mm-hmm. song that you know mm-hmm. or you love. Mm-hmm. What's your favourite song, Anna? What's you, what are you listening to right now? Or your well, I was going to throw you and make it peanut butter jelly by Galantis just to see how you'd go. Oh, I don't know. But oh, that's not God. a great one. So I'm going to throw Kiki D and Elton John's Don't Go Breaking My Heart. Don't Go Breaking My Heart. Oh, look at you I two. I couldn't if I had tried. That's it. So <laughs> good. <laughs> this is why we don't see Elton John. <laughs> Mate, on a Friday night, I can do a fucking great Elton John. Right, yeah. <laughs> I can do anything slap great chairs, on a night. slap people near me. Oh my god. Love it. Yeah, I just do <laughs> go bananas. Yeah, great. Don't go breaking my heart. <laughs> yep. See, now he's gone. Yeah. Now he's Dane, got what it. about you? What's, What's your, your favourite song? Um, my all time favourite song is Mr. Brightside from The Killers. Right. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Sing it for us, Dean. Oh, I can't. I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> I can mime it. I mime you? it. Yeah, can you just mime it? And, and for the blind people, we'll do it in braille. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, dear. All right, so talk to us, Anna, about how you met us. Like, where, How did that all come about? What happened? Um, so very good friends of mine and yours, obviously, Caroline and yes. Cameron. Yeah. Arthur had um, done all your courses and... I was kind of just in a bit of a, uh, I'm not sure what's going on with life in general, uh, which has probably been my favourite thing to hold on to ever. Um, <laughs> it's just not knowing what's going on. But, um, yeah, so Kaz was talking to me and she said, oh, there's, you're really interested in personal development. I know there's great people, there's great courses. And I was like, I'm not sure. And then I went to an information night right. and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll do that. That's fine. And then I did relationships and you, and I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. 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 What the hell? Yeah. Uh, and can I ask you, have you actually worked out what's going on? Because well, can I haven't worked out what's going on. <laughs> no, no, God, no. No, but now I feel more comfortable with that. Yeah. It's fine, <laughs> baby. Yeah, I feel much more comfortable knowing that, hey, it's fine. I don't have to have all the answers. Yeah. The universe has got my back and all that. So, yeah, I emerge, I feel like I emerged from that a very different person in myself. Mm. Um, and it's been, you know, you've got to keep working at all this stuff. You have your ups and downs, don't you? But I, you ne- I don't feel like you're ever the same person that you went into that course. Yeah. You come so, yeah. Yeah, I think the I'm biggest just- illusion with PD is that you think you're going to do one thing and that you're never going to work on yourself again. If you're not working on yourself, you're not even here. Like it's, either life is going to throw you challenges or you're going to create your own challenges, but you've got to keep working on yourself, mm. you know. Well, a friend of mine were, and I were talking the other day and we were like, fuck, I wish I'd never started. Because yeah. Yeah. you never get yeah. to the end of this, do you? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, it end? It's a very, very normal thing. I mean, I, there's times I think, how would I be if I just had my head in the sand the whole time? Do you know what I mean? I, just, I never yeah. asked any of those big questions like, why the, Why are we here? You know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, wouldn't it be just, you know, you're here. So much you're easier if you're here. just like popping along and just like, yep, okay, no mm. questions, mm. no nothing. Mm. So, yeah. But I, and I agree 100% because I've had those feelings too. Mm. But isn't it funny because when if you were to think about if I hadn't done that, 
how many people would be impacted by me not having done that? Mm. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So by me heavy. not having, and that's not even because like I'm here on a on like talking into a microphone. That's just in terms of my own family or that if I hadn't have shifted a little mm. bit about how I think. Yeah, but who that? cares about them? Milton? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Let's not talk about that. Let's not get serious at all. <laughs> that you can have on other people when you yep. do, mm. you know, head towards mm. try to understand yourself better, mm. you're going to understand other people and, and yeah. it just blows on, doesn't it? Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, that, you know, that concept of, of waking up, other people around you, you know, I, I always give the analogy of it's like switching the light on. There's a moth in the room. The people around you will either cling to the light and want to know what have you done? You've done something because you're different, or they'll just bounce off the light, or they just fly out the window. And yeah. so, one of three things happens, you know. And I and I think that, you know, that's when you realise it's not all just about you. It is important that when you grow, you give other people permission to do the same, which I think yeah. is, is really vital. Mm. And then Dean was another story. I remember Dean coming <laughs> into the audience, and when he came into the audience, right. I thought, I remember looking at Anna and Anna was saying, now listen, my brother's coming in. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Now he's, uh, he's like, this is hard for me to get him in here. And I'm like, no, 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 I understand. And when he came in, I thought, Jesus, he could actually throw something from that audience. Like, there, was, there was times I was looking at him thinking, God, if, I'm pretty sure if he could come up here and just punch me in the head, that I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he would. He was he not. He probably was tempted to a was number not of times. Happy. He was like, oh, oh my happy. God. Mm. Yeah, I still remember the day. I still remember the day because I, I, I – I just had this train wreck event. Like you can't, it's, I mean. Are you okay to um, share what that was? Or briefly? Yeah, I, I was running a massive um, uh, day party in, in Melbourne and, um, you know, I expected X amount of people and then all of a sudden out of the blue, this other lot set up a, 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 an event which was opposition to me, but they gave away 800 tickets. <gasps> so I didn't stand a chance. Oh. But I had these international DJs, international singers, the whole thing. The international singer was so bad and she was so stoned and almost <laughs> fell off the stage that I had to get on, I had to get on after her and, and apologise to the crowd and say how <laughs> shit it was. Stop the music. Right? I had oh to no stop way. the music yeah, because yeah. it was so bad. And so everyone thought I'd gone postal. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, sorry, I've got a dog in the background there. He's gone postal. <laughs> um, but everyone thought I'd, I'd lost it and because I'd lost so much money. I just lost so much money and it was, I didn't know what was going on because 2012 was the first real time we really started to feel the global financial crisis. Right. So people weren't going out as much mm. um, and I just kept doing the same thing over and over again and mm. expecting it to change. I was losing money hand over fist. Mm, mm. So Anna basically, she knew what was going on and decided to get me along to which uh, it was a uh, Money Mind Matters? Mastermind of Money. Ma ma oh, yeah, that's one. Sorry, I've only done it five times. Yeah. You'd think I'd know the name of it by now, wouldn't you? Yeah, you're a great advocate. Anyway. Mate. You're a great advocate. <laughs> so I, dra I go to this thing and she drags me along and she wouldn't tell me what it was all about. And I'm like, I, I sort of remember standing there and thinking, oh, I don't feel, I can't do this. I'm not up to it. I, 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 I can't go in. I go, I, I, the last thing I need is a rah-rah session because I'm going to kill them all, right? <laughs> and I thought, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then I... I said to her, look, you know what, um, Murph, I, I just think I need to go. Mm. And that, just as I said that, round the corner this little leprechaun came <laughs> and he, you you looked at me, Mitch, and you just went, blah, 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 Anna. Oh, by the way, yeah, you man, you look like you need to be here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? You really? What? And I was sort of like sitting there going, I said, what? So then I go into this function and um, and I'm sitting there and thinking, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. You, you, can't, you can't go down this road. You, you, you were in Amway for a long time. You can't, do, you can't do this again. You can't. You can't. Anyway, I, there was something about I didn't really pay much attention to uh, much of it. I was trying to tune out. I was trying to, you know. But it was one thing you guys said to, said to the crowd, which I went, wow, okay, that makes sense. It's when your life um, – isn't progressing, that isn't moving ahead, and isn't whatever. There's a good chance that you you don't have a why, mm. right? And I was like, what the fuck is that? What do you mean? I don't have a why. Oh, and the, the, when you kept talking about it, I was like, yeah, that makes sense because I've been doing everything, but I knew how to do it. I knew what to do, but I didn't have I didn't have the why. I lost the why to why I was actually doing this stuff, and I was just spending money hand over fist. Mm -hmm. So. 
that was the first introduction and that was probably the most valuable thing. And then, you know, the next, um, I remember there was a, the, the next course was up, which was relationships. Relationships in you, I think it's the first one. Yeah. So, and I'm like, and Anna's going, maybe you should go to relationships in you. I'm like, maybe you just need to shut your face because I've done one course, I'm fine now. And then I'm like, it, as it got closer, I'm like, oh, I'll go and do it. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, everyone else has and these friends of ours and Anna and everyone's got something out of this thing. I need to go and do it. And um, that thing blew my head off. And actually the first night, which is the Friday night, I didn't think I was going to go back the next day. Mm. Right? I literally went home and drank some bourbons and went, no, I'm not going back to that. That doesn't suit me. <laughs> and then I went, I, I went, Anna just did one or two things. She said, you know what? What are, you, what are you going to lose? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went back and, I, and it then, was. I, then I turned my phone off and didn't answer any of his calls. <laughs> <laughs> and, and without saying too much, because the course is, I think people just need to, you know, there's so many things that came out of that weekend and so many things that I loved about it and hated about it at the same time. Mm. But by the time you get to the end without giving too much away, I had honestly my whole life had dramatically changed from that weekend. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it it is a magic week, man. It's very. We, we just love the chance to work with people at that level. You know, we look especially we know, we, love people who who yeah. are a little bit hesitant to yeah. come. Because, hesitant? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a drag them in, buddy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but it's it's like you know, people who are most. I love the the skeptics because people who are super skeptical are the ones who really have a like a mind blowing. Yes, they're not expecting you know, it because it's so left of center. It's like. Holy moly! I mm. never even thought of it like that, and that's because you weren't yep. fucking thinking. You know, you're yep. asleep. You're just going through the motions, and that doesn't get you to where you want to get to. You know. So, mm. do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you guys do where you are? Because you work together, your brother and sister, and you work together. So, just tell us a little bit about what you do mm. and, right. and why you do it. Hannah, do you want to mention? Yeah. Okay, so um, we've been doing a radio show for the. The better. I was a program director at a, a little commu a commu a community station in Melbourne called Joy, and um, one one day the, the, there was a girl who was on air and she just cracked the shits and walked out. And I was like, "Oh, interesting. I need to find. I need to fill the spot." Right. So I rang Anna up and I said, "Hey, listen. Do you want to do a radio show once a week with me?" Um, she's never been in radio, never done any stand up at that stage. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll give it a go." And so. We got on and people just started to really love it. Um, and then we ended up doing two breakfasts. And then it, the story goes, we did it for about nine years, just for fun. Just for, yeah. seriously, I'd been in radio since I was 19. So for me, it was just, I love it. It's been in my blood forever. And yeah. for Anna, it was a chance to really express herself in a way that she hadn't been able to do before. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that. And then um, we didn't really think it was going to, you know, we threw out some um, uh, audition tapes to the major commercial networks, uh, but, you know, it, it's one of those things too that you learn through this kind of teaching that you've got to have, you've got to be very, you've, ve you've got to be very determined and set in the in what you are wanting out of it. That's yeah. the thing. And I think for a long time we we're like, oh, I'd be good, but a bit nervous. And I had commercial radio fears from the past when I was young and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff going on. So we just kept plowing along with this. And then um, this year we got offered to do full time at the uh, at Joy, which is great. Um, and it's everything we love, but now it's time we realise through what we've done and what we've learned is that there's bigger things out there that we can actually do yeah. because now we've we this is a stepping stone. So yeah, yeah no, it's been good. It's been a really good ha, ride. Have, have you thought about a podcast? Yeah, yeah we're so yeah. About, we're trying to work out what the angle because I mean everyone's got a podcast, don't they? Like yeah. so. Yeah. So so our angle that we've we've discussed and talked about is that we're really good with celebrities. We're really good at interviewing celebrities. Right. But what we want to do is we want to actually tap into celebrities on a deeper level because you know everyone talks about their this is their latest release, this is their blah blah yeah. blah whatever. We want to we want to work on stuff at, that actually people go. Oh wow! They went through all that as well. Yeah, they went through the hard times. They went through the perspective. Like, what? Okay, what did you have to overcome to get to where you are? Like, mm. it's all glamour and whatever. It's not behind the scenes. There mm. are other podcasts that do similar things to that. So, I just really want to make sure that we've got an angle that, like, yeah. you know, stands it's out and for you. Yeah, but and I think the thing is that the, the, the unique part about what we do is we've we're always going to throw humour into it. We're always going to be mm. that, you know, we're going to, we can tap into people because we've we've learned enough skills along the way, thanks to you guys, mm -hmm. to be able to, 
tap into people's emotions on a deeper level and be able to throw the light and shade in there and just yeah. and give them a, a bit of fun at the same time. So that's, that's what resonated with. Can you guys hear me? All right, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's what resonated for me with you guys. And I mean, if, like I've done other courses and stuff, day seminars or whatever, but mm. it's the humour that comes out of the, like it's a it's really irreverent and you don't have to be like yeah. Ugh, it doesn't yeah. have to feel like a church service just to yeah. you know to to move someone forward. Yeah. You can have fun. have with it and that's been my whole that's that's who I am I like to have fun with stuff so. you do stand up comedy now right Talk yeah yeah that. so Has that happened with, afterwards that happened afterwards didn't it yeah that definitely happened afterwards like I was really a like a frustrated actor and wanted to do all these things and I was I don't know whether I was very good at acting I, I used to try the auditions for colleges and get like a call back and then no further right. so that was just me in the way but um, and then I never thought about radio. That was kind of Dean's thing. And then I always thought that I'd only be better if I could memorize. I wouldn't be good off the cuff. Yeah. And then radio taught me that I'm very good off the cuff. In fact, I'm better off the cuff than I am at reading yeah, stuff yeah, now. Yeah. So, um, and then Peter, our older brother, came back from overseas, and he really wanted to try stand up, and it had been in my mind forever. And I was like, mm. and then he tried it first, and I was so nervous, and I was just petrified. So for about three. I think he did six months before me, and I was like, I'm going to get up there. It's the most terrifying thing I've ever mm, done, but say, yeah. it's the best fun when it's working as well. And I've really I've found my groove about that as well. So, I mean, I don't want to give up. I'm not 20. I think if you start at 20 and you're out every night, you know, and you could do 50 gigs all over the place, you know, right. it's a different story. Um, so for me, it's really fun, and I can utilize it. In the radio show, I use a lot of stuff, and there's voiceover work coming and different things. So yeah, but that's Dan. I, I run two rooms before COVID. I had three rooms on the go. And wow! I do like performing for this thing called Bogan Bingo, which I'm not sure there is in Perth. <laughs> I don't know if we've, I've heard we've you had, talking we've about had, it. We've had Bogan Bingo over here. Oh yeah, so I, I do it like you know, it's a character spanner, and like I've had like you know, <laughs> 400 people in a room, and you know, I can get up and and hold a room now. You know, yeah. this is. Stuff that's happened in the last couple yeah, but of it's not it's not really stretching her um, <laughs> acting skills a long way. She's the biggest bogan I've ever met. <laughs> so I've, I've, yeah. I've never met as much of a good looking bogan as, as <laughs> she's a good looking bogan, but fuck, she's a bogan. <laughs> but I was going to say, have you have you had any 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 tough moments like any hecklers, anything like that? Have have you have you handled that? Yeah, like I've had tough gigs with the bingo. I haven't really, I've had like two really bad stand up. My brother, the other brother, Peter, was there for both of them. Right. And he liked to come up to me afterwards. He's like, because he always goes, Oh, you never bomb. You never bomb. Right. right. And because I've got a lot of experience in front of people talking and stuff mm. like that. So generally, if I know what I'm supposed to do, I can hold it to the end. But I've had like two where it's just gone <laughs> really bad. And I'm just like, Oh my god! I just got off going. What the fuck would I do that for? Yeah. Like, but that those ones are the ones you learn because the, when, when it goes good, you can't remember what happens. That's you right. just know it's good. Yeah. But when it's bad, every single minute that you're on stage, <laughs> you feel a painful. thousand. <laughs> yeah. So painful. Dean runs away. He goes and hides in the toilet. I, I can't watch it. I go and hide yeah. in the yeah. toilet. Yeah. yeah, I can't do it. Bad uh, comedy can't do. Um, I was going to say, then, Dean. Um, in in terms of what you do and, and in terms of you know we we spoke um a, a couple of years ago in, in STP we were talking a little bit about um a we're in the of, relationship section yeah, of STP we're, yeah yeah we're that. in the relationship section and we've actually been speaking with Dr John Gray doing a couple of interviews with him and he said so we've decided that we want to um we want to ask some questions he said to us next time next time you come on Mitch just Ask questions around some of the stuff that like being specific actual, with some of the specific questions. Yeah. And we were talking about we were talking about um, something uh, which blew my mind in STP. We were talking about the, you know the promiscuity of of um, gay men, and you brought up a really great point, which was because there was no marriage at the time, there was no bond, there was no there was no connection, there was no reason for people. So men were predict you know gay men were predominantly very promiscuous. Um, do you remember that conversation? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, and, and no, wanna, it's very obviously clear. it's legal now. Yep. Gay marriage is legal. How has that changed things? Or <laughs> maybe you need to explain that because I think it didn't come across as well. Do you want to explain what? Okay, so so before so when was gay marriage um, legalized? It was uh, three, three years ago. Wasn't it? Seventeen. 
17? Yeah, three years ago. So, um, yeah, before that, it was it was hard because uh, you know our relationships on that deeper level weren't recognised. You yeah. know, you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't get married, and so for a lot of guys out there, it was it was very much a thing. Well, well, what does this evolve into? You mm-hmm. know, and um, so you know, there's this kind of culture of there was not a lot of role models getting married because you couldn't get married, but there wasn't a lot of role models in the gay scene. So you'd find that people their natural when when they've been bombarded with a lot of stuff, whether it's open relationships, uh, you know, um, people cheating on their boyfriends, blah, 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 whatever it is, it becomes, it, it, it sort of gets in the psyche of, of, uh, of a, um, uh, a community. Does that make sense? Right, so right. you, th- you Instead start of- thinking that's the norm yeah. because there are no role models yeah, uh, right. of such. But since um, gay marriage has been legalised, it's changed that to a degree because now uh, it's, it's, um, you know, and it's hard because, you know, I, I understand and I, I did back then understand having lived a straight life uh, for many, many years, I understand that there was a big fear about it, that there was like, you know, why do guys need to get married, you know? Mm. I mean, it's not going to lead to, for a lot of people, it's, a lot of them, it's not going to lead to kids and blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, but it's not, it's not, it was never about marriage. It was about the evolution. being equal. It huh? was about being equal. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, right, right. It was right. just about being equal yeah. because for so long everyone was like, no, no gay marriage. You can't get married. Yeah. What you're saying to so many people is you're not equal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, and, and that's all that's all the um, the LGBTIQ community wanted. They, yeah. they just want to be treated equal. Mm-hmm. So massive things have changed since then. Lots and lots of really ins- um, uh, role models for, right. for younger gay guys you know, it's now that can evolve into something else. You can have, you know, and even uh, in terms of um, adopting or fo- fostering kids and so forth, yeah. that's all changing as well. So wow. you can create your family, wow, you know. Wow, 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 wow. Has, that been yeah, good for, has that been good for you? Do you think as an individual person yourself? Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I honestly believe, see, when I came out, I was, I didn't see the difference between being me as a straight person and me coming out as gay. I did not say, I couldn't work it out why the, where there was such a big deal. Even though it took me so long to get there, yeah. when I got there, I was like, I haven't changed. I'm still the same person. Right. The this black is, this hot is... pants. The black hot pants were different. No, <laughs> that, that was a, that was a dramatic change. You know what? Well, you, you know, you know, and that and that I, I keep saying to people when we tell this story, I say to people about what we learned with you guys, which yeah. is suppression expression. Yes, what, right. The more you suppress stuff, and I'd suppressed stuff for 27 years, and I was I burst that fucking cupboard down. I just went crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, because all this stuff had to come out. Yeah. And so I say to people all this, like you became Turbo gay, super gay, like <laughs> turbo, tur- turbo, turbo gay, like it was full on. Like, and and the thing with it is, you know, um, it, for those I tell people all the time, don't be, don't be afraid of that. It will, ba- it will plateau out, mm. but it is because of the suppression thing, and you, you people do go crazy, um, and just everything's a new journey, but. Mm. It plateaus out. You find your spot. You find your group. And did you yeah. find out when you came out that everybody around you was like, yeah. Did people know? Like, no, because back, see, see, we're talking 20-odd years ago. Right. So basically then uh, the friendship group split in two and yeah. half of them I never saw again. Really? really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fine. My father, and it's a long in-depth story, but um, being a very um, uh, liberal, yeah. you know, yeah. man, yeah. Um, he was, uh, the, the conversation I had with him when I came out was because I, 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 I I feel sorry for any of the uh, younger members of the community who come out to their parents and get the reaction that I got because mm-hmm. I had established my friends, my base, my life, um, and so his opinion didn't really matter to me all that much. Right. I, I wanted him, him to accept it, mm. but at the time he wasn't ready to accept it. And how the old, conversation. How old were you? I was twenty-seven. Really? Okay. So you know, and time time heals all. You know, uh, I mean, now he's happy to have we. I take all the orphan gays down to their place for Christmas, and so he gays. greets them with a beer, and you know, and he's, you know, and he wears his little pink Christmas hat and all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, it's it's just it's change. It, it, it is time, but back then, you, I I feel like now, now with the, the the parents coming through with their children and whatever, I just don't feel like there's a lot of them who give a shit. Yeah, you know, I just feel like times are changing, so which is great, really good. So, you know, the whole suppression expression thing, do you feel like you were suppressing? Like, I mean, 
you said that you, you, you classified it yourself that you were straight or that you'd lived straight or whatever. How did, what happened? Like, how did you? So what happens, what happens with, you know, de- denial is a very strong emotion. Mm. Like it is incredibly strong. So for the most of my life, I'd grown up in this very, you know, I had a pretty rough brother, you know, and uh, very straight parents, no gay um, people in my world. You, you know, there was maybe one or two people out at school, but you know, I was, I was, I had taught myself at an early age that this, that's not right. Mm. You know, that is not the, that you, you just don't do that. And as a young kid, I would remind myself if I ever had a thought about anything which was slightly in that arena, yeah. I would scratch my arm severely to make sure that that reminded me that I shouldn't go down that road, wow. right? Okay. So that you, so denial is an incredibly sure. strong. It suppresses everything because you're so – and you do everything to try and cover up for it, you know, whether it's the clothes you wear, the attitude you have. I was a big Asleen – Holden Premier driving, ACDC listening, oh, yeah. you know, womanizing, oh. bogan from hell. I did That's everything. I would the, that absolutely. Was the contrast with the hot pants was so extraordinary. <laughs> 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 but that that was all. That's all a cover up. It's all. A, it's all yeah. being in denial. And you know, I tell people all the time now that you know, watch the ones with the strongest voices against whatever, because oh, they're 100%. the ones that got the most to hide. Yes, a hundred percent. That's why you find all the people that are saying anything about you know. Anything they're they're bagging anybody. It's like they're yep. they're yeah, trying to yep. hide that part of themselves. Totally, one hundred percent. The they what they're displaying in public is to just like to demonstrate or to hide what's actually going on in private. Yeah. How but is you that? Know, is it, go on, go on. It's it's funny because had I not done your uh, courses, I wouldn't have understood what I did. Mm. Like I wouldn't understand that. I'm such a big believer in the suppression expression thing, mm. um, and. You know, I view it now daily in things that I do, you know, emotions of people and all this kind of stuff. I look at it and I go, it's so, it's so true so evident, what you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it, when you, when you go through with things like I went through with your course, it's so good to understand what you did because a lot, you can have a lot of regret with things as well. I regret that, you know, I should have come out earlier. earlier. I should have done this, whatever. And what I realised, again, through your teachings is it's not about having regrets. It's about finding the blessing and all the stuff that, yeah. you know, has gone before you. Yeah. And what did you learn out of it? How did you get stronger? How did you, how did it make you? Mm. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, that did, history is perfect and it leaves great clues for us to understand who we are when we do have that flip, that change, that shift, you know. It lets yeah. you know. Did you, what did you feel about all of that, Anna? Did you know, do you think? or did you- uh, No, I didn't. I was... Um, I'd been away overseas for a few years as well and he'd been with a girlfriend for, um, I don't know, most of eight years. And so I didn't. But then when I came back, mum started saying, oh, you know, they're having problems. And I thought, well, that's really odd because they were really good together. And I was like, well, that's really odd. And then um, at one stage we went out and he was being, he was really drunk, but he was being really flirtatious with these guys. And I was like, Hello, there's more to this story. Right, my God. <laughs> so I asked him when we were at this nightclub and he just looked at me like horrified and just turned on his heel and that was it. And I was like, ooh, oops, because, you know, I'm quite blunt at times. He's gone away <laughs> like this. So um, I went, I was staying at mum and dad's and I got a phone call from him the next day and he was like, oh, I need to come and speak to you. And I was like, oh, here we go. So I was just sunbaking and he came down and he was like talking about everything else except and yeah. I said, right, do you want to come and do you want to tell me what you came to talk to me about? And yeah. he goes, oh, um, did you ask me a question last night? I went, yes. And he goes, I don't know. And I said, well, don't you think it's time to find out, honey? Yeah. And he was like, oh. And I was like, I just want you to be happy. Like I didn't care but I was like, yeah, we've got a road to go if that's you know, because yeah. knowing mum and dad and everything, I was like, that's fine. I'm here. It's fine. So I had no idea until that moment. And then I was like, okay, cool. What do we do now? How yeah. do we yeah. move forward? It was never an issue for me. And to hear stories, you know, of the scratching and stuff like that, there's parts of me that go, oh, that's horrible. It's that terrible you're- that people have to feel that yeah. day. Yeah. But the other thing, the other thing too, is I had a girlfriend of eight years and we were like, you can't, we were inseparable. Like, and, and that, that was the confusing thing too, because I, I was in denial I was pushing all these emotions to the side. We got along like a house on fire. Had we broken up earlier, like way back in the piece, maybe I would have come out then. But right. 
it was so good. I kept thinking it doesn't probably get better than this, but there was, there's, <laughs> you're not living your authentic self. Yeah. There's a part of you. And, and the, the deciding factor is everyone was expecting us to get married. And the deciding okay. factor with me is I can do this. I can marry her, but I'm only going to be mentally with her 80%. Mm. And I started crying because I was like, wow, she just, that's not, a, it's not about me. She deserves someone who's with her a hundred percent mentally, mm. Mm. not 80%. That's right. That's bullshit. Yeah. So it, it was kind of like, yeah, that was the, that was the turning point for me to go, nah, I have to get out of this because that's actually, that's, I, I, thank God she's an angel and she's moved, you know, she moved on and she's got a family, the beautiful kids and whatever. But there was a lot of guilt with that as well mm. that, oh, fuck, have I, yeah. Have I, have I wasted her time and, you know, and so, um, yet again, through what you guys teach is yeah. about, is about guilt. It's a wasted emotion and, mm. and we all do things and it's finding the blessing. And she came out, she came out even better with, with her life and, and her kids and all that kind of stuff. And we had a great time. There was never a day that went by that we didn't have a time. Yeah. So, Isn't yeah. It's funny that time. sometimes people's turning points are, about how everybody else is going to feel. I mean, and that it's not like if that's what makes you turn, well, then that's great, like, you know, at yep. the end of the day. But a lot of the time it's like, you know, people say I got off drugs because of my kids or I, you know, I, I did this because, you know, I was I knew it was going to affect them. And if that's what it takes, it's what it takes. But it's funny how we yep. don't yeah, necessarily but, but, do know, that I, for I ourselves. Think, I think that ultimately, I think ultimately we do actually do it for of ourselves. Course. But it sounds in some ways more noble to people to say that it's for someone else. But in actual fact, that's just a, an outcome of, yeah. of low self-worth. Yeah. You yeah. know, when you realise, no, I fucking did it for me because I did it for me because I knew that for me there was somebody waiting on me and for her there was somebody waiting on her totally. and together we just weren't the right people and mm. that's okay. It, it is such a... Actually, she said to me just after it, she said, oh, I just worry about him. It must be awful that he's gone through all that. So <laughs> you, know, you spend all this time worrying about the other person. The other person's just like, I mean, obviously she said to me, if it had been another girl, different story, I would yeah. have been curious, but because he's... You know, it's it's come out. She goes, well, we can't be with me then. Mm, like, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a it's a really weird one. Like I said to you, the, the whole denial thing is, and um, I just think it's 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 a shame that people can't, um, you know, are going to spend. I, like, if, or anything I could say to anyone is, don't waste time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, don't waste time because every day you do, and you're living that life which isn't really yours. You're not living your authentic self, and it's mm. and it, it, it it's. It's really difficult. You've got to be, you know, you've just got to learn to, um, I don't know, I think people just need to learn to deal with things a lot quicker. I didn't. And hopefully I can help other people who are going through similar stuff. So, You know, you said that you um, you realised that you didn't have your why or you felt like you had your what and your how and stuff. You had your drama happening in 2012. Did you find your why? Yeah. What was What's your why? My why is um, uh, I because I, I lived sixteen years. I, I was doing um, running big events and parties and whatever. It's a it's an interesting world that whole party world, isn't it, Mitch? It is. <laughs> Mitch knows um, what about I can it. remember. <laughs> <laughs> and what we and, can remember, yeah. <laughs> and what I realised is I was doing um, I was creating uh, memories for the moment for people mm. like I was creating this eight hours of escapism for people and I'd see you know thousands of people having a great time but I wasn't having a good time mm. it's weird it was like it was yeah. like I was trying to trying to ch I was chasing the dragon of trying to get the oh go the next one the next one the next one yeah. and trying to do live in that world where it's parties and nightclub people and you know there's drugs and alcohol and whatever it's a whirlwind tour and you know, it, it's it's none of it's real. Yep. That's the thing. You're creating uh, these environments of escapism, yep. you know. Mm. Nothing wrong with that except I'd been in it for 16 years. Mm. So, you know, and I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't escape it. So I, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. The COVID um, has been really good because it kind of made me stop mm. for the first time in a long, long time and reassess everything and go, actually, you know what, I feel present for the first time in, in 16 years. So, you know, I'm not living six months in advance or 12 months in advance or whatever. But it also, I'd been working with, in, a, in amongst all this, I'd been working with footy players and, um, you know, business people and whatever, doing this 
really good um, visualization, goal setting, sure. um, mindset work, and all that, which I started years ago. But I never thought. I I just thought it was you know when I'm this old dude sitting in a chair, I'll get into that. You know, <laughs> I never thought I'd actually do anything with it because I'd, I'd done some courses and whatever. But what I realised is there's a shitload of people who need um, just that positive reinforcement and that um, belief in themselves and the confidence and 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 so forth. So, so that for me was my why has become my why mm-hmm. is is like I want to invest a, a lot more time and through the radio show. You know what well, we put a smile on people's faces every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's through you know radio is a great way to absolutely especially for the gay community. You know we're finding that we get a lot of people gravitate towards our show because they feel they feel safe. You know, they feel like they've, um, they're have they a part of something, even though it's a radio show, they feel like it's, they're a part of something. And we can, through our radio show, we break down walls uh, of the broader community by educating them on on issues like whether it's, um, uh, we had one, uh, we, you know, it was uh, Bisexuality Week last week. Well, who the fucking knows about, you know, we had to um, talk to people about it and expose people to it and whatever. So I find through all the stuff I'm doing now is my why Mm -hmm. because it's giving me purpose. Whereas beforehand you could have the biggest event under the sun, you know, and, and thousands of people get so many responses, but I was empty inside because it wasn't changing people's lives. In fact, Mm -hmm. for a lot of people it was fucking them up, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You know, because they were trapped in it. And I was, I felt for a long time I was perpetuating that because I was like, Oh, I'm running this thing, and yeah, I'll see you at the next one. And I know this person needs to go into, into therapy, or I know this person needs to go into detox big time. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it, I'll see you at the next one. Yeah. It was just I felt like I wasn't helping them. I was some way responsible for them going down roads of drugs and alcohol, and whatever. So, yeah. 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 And uh, what about you? I don't yeah. know that you – did you have a question about your why? But I'd still like to know what it is. But, like but I can, And just while you're going there, Anna, just, I mean, why did you go to comedy? Why, why did you want to put yourself out there like that? Because so, it's fucking hard. Like, man, I, I, yeah. I sit back and I think, like, I, I know what it's like to stand and try to command an audience. It's, it's you know, you, it And when takes, it flops, like it, when it, it, Mitch does, like, not, not comedy, obviously, but he tries to entertain <laughs> people. Yeah. And every now and then a certain audience is it just, we're like, yeah, whoa, yeah, yeah. this is There's certain around. audiences you walk into and it doesn't matter. Yeah, you, I think, fuck, man, I need to check the pulse of these fuckers. Are they awake? <laughs> they not get my <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Anyway, Someone check that woman's pulse. <laughs> yeah, um, why comedy? It's just sort of evolved. Like, I... I've looked for ages for what my why is and stuff. And I've always got the good job. Like, you know, I was a flight attendant for years. I was cabin supervisor. Great. You know, bored the hell out of me. And I got a job in pharmaceuticals. It's a good paying job. Bores me, right? Unless I can entertain people, bring a smile to people's faces, then I don't really feel like I'm that fulfilled. And then I did a um, a diploma of life coaching. I was like, oh, because I really enjoy helping people as well. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, I don't really think one-on-one coaching it's me at this. I just don't know. And people, you know, when it's too heavy, I'm like a bit uncomfortable about mm-hmm. that. Like, I, you know, Dean does a lot of coaching. He's okay with that. Whereas I, I, I'm a bit like, oh, I don't know. But if I can bring a smile to someone's face and see them light up and just, you know, change their day because I've made them happy or whatever, um, it just, I just, that just for me is me being in McGroove. That's what yeah. my wife is at. So now with the radio show and getting to spend, you know, we hear from people in, Outback Australia going, thank you so much. We've had people during COVID just going, thank you so much for getting up and doing what you do every day. You guys are what is making me smile and getting through these days. And, you know, that just makes me happy, you know. Mm -hmm. Like if I could do that on a bigger scale, which is what I'm trying to sort of, you know, bring into existence in my world, you know, with all the hosting and the shows and performing and just, I just love it. Like I, I'll sit in my, my room and do like, they've been recently doing Bogan Bingo online. So I'll just sit wow. there for an hour and a half and just make people laugh. Like, and it's great. You see happy faces. And so, you know, for a long time I was confused. Should I be married? Should I have had kids? And, dah, dah, dah. and then I did the stepmom thing for a couple of years with a guy who pretty much, pretty much requested that I give up all of those things to focus on him and the kids. And everything, everything I learned from you guys about giving away your values, I gave away all my values because I thought I'm 41, this is the last opportunity for me, I'm never going to get married and he's got kids and so that's taken care of and 
And I, I just did not look at any of the red flags because yeah. I wanted so much to have a why that was about that. Mm-hmm. And it just, I, I've never felt more small in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and all I kept hearing a lot of times was why, you know, don't ever make yourself small so that someone else can feel big. Mm-hmm. And uh, incidentally, he was short. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I really did. And I lost myself in that. And then coming out of it, I've had to really rely on what I learned from you guys of just really tapping in. What is your why? What do you yeah. want? What does fill your cup and you know and now I'm so happy doing I mean there's stuff I want to change I'm still mm-hmm. doing the repping job to you know pay the yep. bills and stuff like that but I can balance that out because I can bring yeah. joy to so many people and you know we're doing a really good thing and I, I just love making people smile so mm-hmm. you know heaps happier heaps happier yep. but she's also and um, you know like the funny thing with Anna is she didn't do comedy would not get on that stage petrified she gets together with this guy who ripped away her values, but he was actually the reason why she got on the stage. Well, this is this is the point I was actually going to make because all great comedy stems from tragedy of some yeah. level. Mm. It was a really, um, it was a very dismantling time, but he at one point said, well, I don't think you, maybe it's for you because you shouldn't do it because it's just, you know, it's, look how much nervous it's making you. And I just, there's something in me that just was like, Fuck you! <laughs> I, I am going to fucking do this if it kills me. So then I just was like, I have to have something for me. And then slowly but surely, by the time I, I broke up with him and we did our first comedy festival show, so the you got weekend, a lot of material from that too. Well, oh, I yeah. did it based on nineteen fifties housewives. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he wanted me to be because he said, I, "I really, that's what I want. I want you to have dinner on the table, no questions, really? whatever." Like, wow. What the fuck? That's not That's me. Not so, you. <laughs> you know, so in the middle of a breakup, I did four weeks of a comedy festival show. So the world was just like, wow. yeah. oh my God, bizarre. So, um, mm. yeah, so I learned heaps. But yeah, the, like, other thing, the other thing I was going to. Comedy as well. Like, I got a coaching gig helping new people do stand up last year. So there's oh, my. Oh, wow. It's come into play as well. Cool. That all dried up because of COVID, obviously. But um, yeah, just being. I, so that, that's combining. I can help and the yeah. laugh. So can I just ask? Uh, Dean was just going to say. Sorry, Dean, you're going to say something there. Oh no, I was just going to say that um, you know because I've been in radio since I was 19, and I've I've seen every female announcer um, that you could ever want to see. Um, Anna is by far well, she's probably one, not even female. You know, probably one of the best um, comedy radio announcers in the country at the moment. Wow! And and so the opportunities will open up. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of time, but. Wow. The, the sheer uh, amount that she creates on air with you know, a lot of those other shows, uh, lots of producers, lots of people, you know, whatever, but the funniness and the off-the-cuff stuff that comes out of it is second to none and she's, like I said, she's probably, in my opinion, from experience, she's probably one of the best in the country. Wow. That's so cool. I love hearing that. Absolutely. But, you know, even just even just with you, Anna, any, every time I think <clears> of you, every time I see you posting stuff or whatever, I'm like, I love the fact I think about you and I think I have fun when I'm with Anna. Like I laugh. I remember we were out at a lunch one time and you were telling all these dating stories and I was <laughs> literally just weighing my pants yeah. Yeah. Um, about how just like how you just in that you would have had like weeks worth of material and just the fact that you just the way you make people laugh mm-hmm. I love that and I, I know I, that yeah. whenever we like Anna and Dean are around it's like oh we're gonna have a giggle now you know yeah. we're gonna have a, a good time you know yeah I'm but sure. that's how we feel about you guys too oh, like we, <laughs> uh, there's something about you type two that is absolutely magical because really? Yeah, you just can't wait to catch up with you. Like yeah, it's just that thing. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's that's lovely. I was looking at some of Anna's could be posts you know? right now. I was looking at some of Anna's posts through the COVID thing. She's like. For fuck's sake, you fucking dickheads! Just fucking stay at home. <laughs> <aren't they?" laughs> we can feel your bogan coming through. As I was, as I was through. reading the post, I was thinking I could hear the accent in the background. You fucking dickhead, stay at home. <laughs> okay, mate. Well, I- Oh, no, she has a temper yeah. and I'm very impatient at times, which yeah. is why I think I'm not the one-on-one yeah. coach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Just a group. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, Dean, you probably should ring Anna and take the phone off her. Just take the oh, phone off no, her. no. I, I learned years ago, just let her yeah, run her course. Um, yeah. So just let me ask a question. Couple, and, uh, let's let's say talk. we're, we're, uh, we're, we're um, you know, I, I'm always interested in, you know, kids childhoods and stuff like that and your and your childhood let's say i was to step into anna's room when she was 12 years old oh what would i see on the walls of anna's room and then while we're talking to anna dean 
what would I have seen on the walls of your room if I'd have stepped into your room when you were 12 years old? Years old. Absolutely, at 12, I'm pretty sure 12, um, would have been a picture of Christopher Atkins that I kissed on the mouth every night before I went to sleep and it was so bad that the mouth like wore Turned away. Turned to puppy emotion. But that a TV week. Do you remember the TV week and the paper was yes. really terrible? Yeah, terrible, it yeah. It wasn't glossy. It was like newspaper paper. And so, like, I kissed it so much. <laughs> the mouth is And that's all I can remember, really. Oh, Probably lots man. of soft toys around. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. And, Dean, what would I have seen? 12-year-old, probably um, a lot of Kiss posters. I was into Kiss at the time. Right. Um, but I was always poor Stanley, so I was the lead singer. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of Kiss posters. <laughs> and probably, according to our good Christian mother, a lot of um, a lot of uh, tissues under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the good oh, oh, <laughs> Sorry, you asked. No, 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 that was good. I'm pretty sure I asked about the wall. I didn't go under the wall. <laughs> um, but and I, I can imagine what was also on the wall then if it was happening with the bed. Um, tell me, um, tell me, um, uh, 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 Dean, you were a professional diver for a while. Is that right? Yeah, so I was, I've, I I've, I'm still diving. Yeah, so I um, started diving when I was 12. Right. Um, and then I... Continued right through to I was 19 and then I had eight years or nine years out of it um, and then I fell in love with it again. So I actually came out and the, about six months later I found the sport again and it wow. just changed my life. Wow. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah. That. There you go. So have you any questions you want to ask us? Um, I want to ask. No problem. But it's all right. You know, I want to ask you guys, like, how? Because I know you're such, you're so hands on mm. uh, with your courses. Your courses are amazing. Mm. And um, how did COVID affect you guys as far as like not being able to do those, th yeah. those just wonderful yeah. seeing the faces and the and the and you know those groups and crowds of people and the change that you make. Yeah. How did the, how did that affect you guys? And did you? Did you enjoy, you know, was it the time that you could regroup or was it something you went, oh, we really, sh you know, were you fucked off by it or what's, mm. what's. It was, it was, it was a, a lot of it and all of the above and none of the above as well. It, we came back, we were in India and a few people had said, don't go to India. And we were like, we're going to India. Like this is happening. Nothing had major had happened at the time. And we were, when we were in India, they started telling us about toilet paper shortages and all these other bits and pieces and, you know, oh, wow. stuff was happening back home. And we weren't really seeing that over there in India or in Singapore. It just didn't, wasn't evident. Singapore was quieter, but it wasn't evident. Um, and then we got back here and it was like, what have we stepped into? Like no mm. toilet paper on the shelves. What, like, it was like another world. And I think I got back, you got back maybe 20, 48 hours before me. I got back about... 12 hours before they did the whole lockdown thing. So the timing was like perfect. Um, and we had a seminar due the next week and we were like, if we go to Melbourne, the likelihood is, is they're going to close the borders while we're in Melbourne. We didn't know, but we just had a feeling and then they called it. So we had called, we had called the Melbourne seminar and we said, look, we're not going to be able to do this. And then they called it and said, you like borders closing. And so then it was just like we were here. So the benefit of it um, has been really it was it's been really good for us in a lot of ways because we we terribly missed going out to Melbourne and being able to fly and being able to see everyone. We've got a lot of people who are booked in to do relationships and you, for example, and we haven't been able to get out to them. And everyone has been amazing, amazing just yeah. understanding mm. that, you know, we can't get out there. And obviously just hanging out to we've got people now that have been waiting a year or over a year to be able to do it and they can't. And then we're, we've basically just gone in and gone, right, what are we going to use this time for? How can we – How things that we've always wanted to do and because we're travelling a lot we haven't been able to do, we just stuck our heads down, bums up and started working away and, yeah. and creating we're different things. So we've, creating, we've created a new business um, package that we haven't really taken out to the market yet fully. We've got – a number of people in it, but it's just been a few people in house, um, as in just people that we hand selected and they've come on board. And we've 
ch- changed our coaching. We're in the middle of creating another seminar. Mm-hmm. Can't really run the seminars that we've run, like Relationships New. It's Usually. not really yeah. doesn't really translate to online. But we've got different types of things that we're working on as well. So it's been really it's yeah, been an it, interesting it, year. It kind of <laughs> excuse me. It kind of went it kind of went a bit bananas in but. We had spent a lot of time on stage and we couldn't get into the creative room because we were just packed out all the time. Mm-hmm. So yep. it allowed us to come back and get off stage and actually knuckle down and build out stuff that we had always dreamt about building out anyway um, and make sure that we MJBFI the business world for people. And then we, cre- as Mills said, we created lots of coaching packages. But the other thing is, that was really Im- amazing for, for me personally was um within our organization within mjb we have an amazing group of the staff team that just are fucking blew like, us away wow. honestly everybody stepped up everybody did everybody we just really saw how you know mm-hmm. I, I know when when i'm working with someone my objective is to get them there and but we it really showed me how that translated through everybody, but that everybody's objective is to get a person there, you know, because sometimes had, you can be a bit blind to that when we're out yeah. there in the field and we're not realizing how much everybody is just behind yeah. us and have everyone's yeah. got our backs with mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. and has that same intention. Yeah. So that was that was really magical for us. But I think that um, we, you know, there's this great word that everybody throws around: pivot, pivot, pivot. But uh, we're in the process of pivoting. We didn't want to do an immediate knee-jerk reaction thing. Um, but that wasn't amazing. Um, <laughs> we had to move quickly, um, and we did. And but we have the things that are coming to the f- to the market are gonna be very very good, mind blowing stuff that we for ten years we wanted to be able to do. We just couldn't bloody do it. But so now we've we've but done do that. Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what COVID's been good for though? Like really, is just getting like I I bumped into. Um, one of our clients probably about six weeks ago at the shopping centre and she had a mother in, a grandmother in Adelaide who was um, passing away, ended up dying that night, left that night. And I just went, oh, you know, I was I was like giving her sympathy saying, you know, my heart goes out to you that you can't. She goes, no, 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 it's actually okay because I see that it's given me this and this and this and this. And our clients coming back to us and just saying how, how they're like, like they wouldn't have been able to get through this period if it hadn't have been for the money work they've done with us or with the mindset work they've done with us because they really mm. they they some of them are schooling us you know because I'm here mm. trying to console her going oh you know you poor love and she's like no, no no it's actually okay because I know about all of this stuff and I've been able to do the work on it do you know what I mean mm. to me that has been really yeah. Really, really humbling. Really humbling. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it, it, I've I've said to you guys a number of times that I feel like this is this your courses and whatever the teachings need to be taught to kids mm. on a mass scale because mm. there's something really fucked up with the system that we have now. Um, and I don't know whether that's something that you guys have looked into, but um, you know, I've, I'm finding now things that I talk about with people now. 10 years ago, I'd never talk about this shit. Yeah. Right. You know, it, there's just such a mon- monumental shift in the way I think about things through what I learned through you guys. Right. And, you know, even this period of time of COVID, I mean, you know, everyone was freaking out left, right and centre, especially in Melbourne and, you know, with the restrictions and whatever. And Anna and I would daily literally say to each other, we're really grateful for the fact that we yeah. can do a radio show. We, yeah. we, we didn't take too much of that on board. Mm. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like, that, that you know, uh, hopefully – hopefully in some way, shape or form that you guys can actually mm. do what you do on a mass scale with young, you know, the, Kids. you know, mm. the youth, yeah. you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and it just sort of helped us with the, you know, we've had pretty much four months of lockdown. There's not six months of no content because no one across the world is doing any performing or mm. there's, no That's movies, all about COVID. there's no movies, there's no nothing. There's, so we've we got the gig, the dream gig at the time where it's just been the hardest to try and yeah stuff together and the thing that has kept us going is like just thinking about that person the why and yeah. who are we trying to entertain and just being grateful for the experience because we've been able to hone our craft I guess this during this period of time when you know let's face it lots of people are getting up a bit later so they might be listening to our podcast like like the, of yeah. the snippet. Mm. But we've had six months where 
without as much pressure as probably usually, we've been able to get really good at what we're doing. So now that things are opening up, mm. this is be the next step. So I look at it as a bit of a gift of time that way that yeah, we went from 100%. one day a week. One day a week is different to five days a week. Yeah, 100%. You know, and sustaining the energy and stuff like that. So yeah. it definitely staying grateful. Yeah. You have to worry. Listen, guys, we love and appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's I want so to say, good. <laughs> it was, it was lovely just chatting with you. It's always lovely hanging out with you. Um, one of our, I just meant to say to you before, one of our um, film guys, I told him like before that we, that we know you, like Dean, and he's like, the guy that runs the Rock City parties, I've been to them. <laughs> They're so lovely. He's, he's as gay as Christmas himself. And he's like, yes, I love it. Yeah. And he was I, I think so that's excited. It. I think that's one of the blessings of doing what I've done for so long. I can go anywhere in the world and I'll bump into someone that's been to one of the events. Oh, you know, so, <laughs> that's cool. So, but are you guys, excited? thank you, you so much. Are you going to be still doing that? You don't know. I don't know. Like, you know, it's hard because I, for where we stand at the moment, clubs will open up. But, I mean, in, in Brisbane they're opening up and they're, they're allowed 100 people and you've got to sit down and no dancing. Yeah. Kind of isn't what <laughs> I do. Not really the thing. You know, yeah, and so yeah. – so will it be the same? I don't know. And I feel like the longer I, the break I have from it, the, the less likely yeah. it is I'll go back to it. Right. But the occasional thing, I, I think running them is always sort of in my blood. So running something will something. be yeah. on the cards. Maybe we just in don't a know. Format. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. It was really good having thank a you. chat with you. Thanks. You're doing the best. You look, and I know you, you know guys you need a bit so of freedom well. here. Pardon? You, you look so well. Oh, is it's, it? It's, it's the lighting. <laughs> That's what freedom does for you. Yeah. Freedom, so good. Yeah. We, we look fucking awful, actually. It's just, yeah. Lighting and makeup, it's amazing. Oh, well, thanks, hopefully guys. we can catch up soon. Yeah, See hopefully. Guys. Big love. See, See you guys. If you found this information inspiring, make sure you subscribe and tune in to the next Dorothy and the Dealer podcast.